Hi, I'm Neil the Aspie Dad. I suddenly know why, now know why some people make their videos on their cars uh, while waiting. It's it's when the kids are at swimming or something like that. And then now it makes sense and now I'm doing exactly the same. This week's video, uh, the the biggest challenge was deciding what to, to make it on. Uh, and... And seeing what's happening on the uh, the forums and groups I I'm a part of uh, for Asperger's, and thinking, what will I make this of? So indecision is is one thing, and and it's a topic I quickly want to touch on. Indecision is something that's been, I won't say wrecking, but it's been quite busy in my own life for a really really long time, and when I look at my own son as well, indecision is a thing being Aspie that creeps up often um, and then one and, and then it kind of starts to loop in your head and, and sometimes so much that you start getting really really anxious uh, just because you cannot seem to make a decision now for a for a kid who's 12 or 13 years old and recently diagnosed that that might be that might be some issue and and now that I'm older and I can deal with my own indecision better, that's the thing that irritates me most about other people if they're indecisive and, and especially my own son. But then I realize that my own my own uh, sh shortcomings or traits let's let's call it a trait rather than a shortcoming it depends on how you put your perspective on it uh, is something that usually irritates you in other people as well. As I said before in the previous video, I, I think the, the, I am I'm truly blessed having had uh, experiences my whole life growing up and, and people around me to teach me a lot of stuff before I actually knew I was an Aspie and before I knew my own son was also Asperger's and me realizing uh, that I was only after he had been been diagnosed. Yes, so the so the indecision is a big thing that that becomes an issue. Something else I saw on the forum, uh, on Facebook, was someone asking, "What's your what's your biggest? Um, I wouldn't say trait, but your your biggest challenge." And and for that person, it was communication, both online, and and in the digital space. I, for me, it's easy speaking to anybody if I if I put on an act. Uh, it's really easy speaking to somebody, but it doesn't last long before they uh, they I, I get irritated with them, or I just kind of tune out, and it's not interesting anymore. Just probably like people aren't interested in what we always have to say because we rant around a, a, about the same stuff that really doesn't interest them. I can remember years back I I came to work one morning. And my one colleague said, "Hey, did you did you see the game? It was a great game." I said, "Well, what game?" And he was going on about a rugby game that was quite significant in the country, being a rugby mad country I live in. I said, oh, "No, no, I was I was busy making diesel for my cars. <laughs> there was a time I was into biodiesel, so I spent the weekend making diesel, not worrying what went on in the news or in sports. It's sports, not my thing." Uh, if I was, I would probably really go head on into something really specific about it and know even everything about it. Um, whereas, as my son is into planes, trains, and automobiles, you know, he knows all the types of Mack trucks and international trucks, every kind of truck there is. Uh, at this stage, we are watching uh, a show on Netflix uh, called Highway Rescue 401 in Canada. So it's trucks rescuing other trucks. And that's his thing now, that he builds from Lego, uh, getting that same thing going. Really Aspie, isn't it? So, yes. And then that communication, not not being able to be around people who don't seem interested um, or clever enough, even. If that makes sense to you as an Aspie, if, if you're not an Aspie, that's a really thing with us. We, we often think other people are stupid because they don't think the same uh, as us, or they're not interested in the same stuff we are. Uh, and and how could this not be so important to them when it's so important to us? But uh, that that's another trait 
that's a trait. We get really interested in, in one or two things over a period of time until it seems to get saturated and then we move on. Well, that's my experience for myself at least. Then we move on to something new. Okay, I know enough about this now, let's go. So Aspies in general are, are quite knowledgeable about one or two things or even many things uh, and, and often get called walking encyclopedias. Uh, but that's not a generalization uh, for all Aspies, it might, might, it might not be true of all Aspies, but for many certainly who, who I've met, they can speak uh, with, with confidence about a few topics that are close to them at that time, and they, they kind of put that knowledge away. Uh, Sherlock Holmes calls, Holmes calls it the attic theory, you know, he organizes things in his mind and he doesn't put things in there that he doesn't need or want and might need later. So why would certain things be important to him? In my case, for instance, a rugby game, it's just guys throwing a ball around and chasing and tackling each other. It doesn't offer any importance to change the world or make sense of it to me in, in any way. So I really don't like it. Have I been to a live rugby game? Yes, with some great friends who, who visited from the Netherlands. So we take their kids to watch a rugby game and, and it's great having that interaction for a while. But when there's a lot of people, it just gets too much really quickly. To sum up today's video, indecision, it's a real thing and we have to work really hard making a decision in the first place and sticking to it. That's probably the hardest part of decision. The second part, communication. It's, uh, it's uh, for, for many aspects, it's really hard striking up conversations for me it's become easier because um you know i'm i'm trained to to be behind microphones i used to be a radio presenter a really odd job for a for an aspie but i'm also a teacher you know so i was trained to speak in front of people and with people not that i always like it i'd rather be in front of people presenting than uh in than among people if that makes any sense, that I have more confidence with that, with that, and then obviously later on I'm really tired when I'm done with that, um, and and then sticking and uh, and and having these pet projects or pet ideas, you kind of follow for a long while or a short while and learn anything about it, as much about it as you can, until it bores you and then you go on to the next thing. And it usually doesn't, it's not something that neurotypicals are aware of. It, it might be something really weird. For me, it's fuels. I love fuel. I love types of fuel, be it electricity or hydrogen or diesels or how diesels and petrols are made. That's one of my pet subjects. And I do as much research about it as I can. And I even make my own fuel. Um, other people find it weird and interesting. I find it really cool. And it's a lot cheaper as well. Anyway, um, if you have something uh, to say, please do leave it in the comments below. Hit the like and subscribe. Uh, it just helps to get this channel a bit better over time. And if you want to read something, I always leave some links for some good reading stuff that's on uh, Amazon Kindle books I own and have helped me. This this video, I want to mention Asper Tools, uh, which is a really good book if you're a parent of a child with Asperger's, uh, and if you're new, newly diagnosed, uh, get that book. It's a really good book, Asper Tools. I'll leave a link in below. Leave us a message or pop me an email. You're welcome. I try to answer all the emails personally, and uh, if you want to have a topic just to chat about in the next videos, leave that as well. I'm Neil the Asper Dad. Keep well. Bye-bye.